Hey guys, in today's video, we are continuing our series of free videos where in the first one, we made a free split video for real to TikToks. In the second video, we made that kind of free split reel into a scrolling one, adding one more video and just having it scroll in an endless loop. And this third one, we are gonna continue from the second and we're just gonna add on one more feature to that scrolling reel. And that feature is masking out specific parts of the reel to make it go through different stages, in this case, color grading. So we are gonna make it so that the bottom layer is lock, or in my case, it's lock. The upper layer is gonna have the Rec 709 and the contrast and exposure adjustments. And then the middle one, is gonna have our color grading and masking applied to it. So without much further ado, let's just jump straight into DaVinci. It's a quite technical one today. So I've done like a kitchen chef kind of thing and prepared a little bit beforehand so that it's easier and quicker for me to explain. So stick with me and if you have any questions or you get lost along the way, try and go back or shoot me a comment down in the comment section and I'll be happy to help you there. So. Let's jump into DaVinci. All right, guys, we are back into DaVinci. And as you can see, we pretty much are where we left off. The only difference is that I have made a new timeline. Let's just hide this part and called it adjustment layer because we have two different ways that we can do this. And we're gonna show you first the easy one, which is the adjustment layers. And then I'm gonna show you the slightly more advanced way, but that gives you more control if you have individual clips that can't be color graded the same way. So let's start with the easy way. And let me just show you what we're trying to achieve today. So let me put on these two clips and mute the track so we don't have that distracting us and just play it through. So as you can see, we have the bottom layer that is just lock. Then we have our Rec 709 and exposure adjustments up here. And then we have our masking color grading here. So that is essentially what we're doing today. And as you can see, we have two added adjustment clips. So let's just hide those again for a second here. And we put the black bars on top just to kind of give the visual representation of where our grades, or our sections are divided. And this is the one that we used in the first part that we did for this video, okay? Or this series it is. So to add these adjustment clips, you go to effects and you just select the adjustment clip. You can drag it to the timeline and you can stretch it out as much as you want so that it fits everything. And it basically just is a layer you put on top so that you can do your adjustments there. It's similar to adjustment layers in Premiere Pro, on Final Cut, or in any other kind of video editing software that you might have tried with layers. This is kind of the same thing. So let's just jump into the color grading tab and see what we've done in here. So let's hide the lots here and go in and see what we're doing. So. We're starting on this clip, which doesn't make much sense. And right now, because we have these two layers hidden, we'll just unhide these again. And now we can see everything. So we have all our layers. And right now I've turned off all the color grading. This is what we did in the previous one. We didn't do the color grading exactly, but we copied it onto our timeline. And right now everything is just turned off. So for the easy way of doing all of this, we're using the adjustment clips. So what I did is I copied all the settings that are similar on all the clips, by the way, onto adjustment clip five. And then I went in and I did some masking in terms of what we wanted the output of this mask to be. And then I went in and did the same thing for the second adjustment clip. So let's just go into our adjustment clip here and see what we've done. So we've taken essentially this part out. So our corrections here and applied them inside of this. And we also have our Rick 709 conversion. So essentially we've just taken out this one, these two, and this one. That's all we have left. And then we have mastered out. So we've added another layer beforehand and made a power window up here to make that so that it's only viewed in here. So it might seem a little bit confusing. Let me show you exactly what I've done. So let's go into this clip again and just copy the settings. Actually, we want to hide clip six again, so we're not confused with any of that. Go back and take our grade from here to the first adjustment layer on track five. Copy it in. And now you see now we're back to nothing happening. Now, in this one, we don't really need the maskings, so I'm going to delete those. And we don't want the color grading, so I'm going to delete those as well. You can leave them in, but for the simplicity of everything here, 
I just want to leave them out. So if I put this back on now, you'll see that all of our clips will be adjusted with our Rec. 709 conversion and our two adjustment layers here, or just two adjustments with our contrast and some styling. So essentially the only thing that we need to do is we can drag these a little bit to the side. I will add a serial node before this one. So now we have a new one that is one. And I'll go into our power windows and into make a square. So I'll just hide the clips for a second here so that we have a little bit more space to work with. Push this out, make it so that it's still aligned. Try and zoom in a little bit here and then align this so that it's perfectly covering that black line that we have in here. And then make all of these zero. It doesn't really make a big difference apart from the fourth one, but for good matter, let's just do it on all of them. Aligning this a little bit again. And now we have, oh, we actually don't want, we made a mistake here, typing nine, that's better. So now we have a mask where we only masking out the top part. So with the keying in here, using these blue ones, we can actually apply this to go through all of these clips. And let me just zoom out so you can see what's happening here. So right now nothing's happening, but as soon as we get to the last one, you can see how that floats into all of them. Now we have told our node tree here that it should only take the key or the mask from up here and apply that throughout all of them and that's what's gonna be outputted. So essentially our adjustment layer now is masked to be only the top part. And because we're using an adjustment layer, nothing is moving, it's a static layer, even though these are scrolling. So if we click play, everything will just scroll through and act like it should. Okay, that seems easy enough, I hope. So just stick with me. So we're gonna do the exact same thing for our second adjustment layer. So let's just hide, unhide that on the timeline. And that's essentially what we've done in here as well. The only difference is that here we have actually taken the entire workflow and put that in. So let's just go in and do the same thing again. So let's copy from this one. It's easy to do in this one because we have the exact same settings on all of them. That's why this can work. It's the same eclipse shot with the same footage or from the same camera. And because it's shot in the same environment, I could color grade them with the exact same grade, which just makes it easy. So just stick with me on this because if you have different clips, let's say something from a camera and something from a drone, that's the second step we'll go through in a minute and why that works in that sort of sense, okay? So let's just copy all of these over here and now everything is turned off, but you actually want it to be turned on. So I'm clicking option D to turn everything on. And as you can see now, the top one is looking quite weird and that's because now we are applying everything from first adjustment layer and the second adjustment layer on top of that. So that's why it looks weird but let's just go in and fix that. So let's hide the clips to have a little bit more space to work with and then drag these a little bit to the side. Do this again, where we add a node before this one. And that's obviously going to the bottom. So we're gonna drag this up and we can actually cheat a little bit. So we could just steal the mask from the other one. So that's what we're gonna do. Just gonna go back one clip, copy this one and apply it to this. And then we're just gonna drag it down and it won't be aligned completely, but we don't have to do the softening and stuff. So that's just a cheeky little trick. You could just apply the mask again and it wouldn't take much longer. So I think that looks quite fine. And then we're doing the same thing. So we're just gonna apply the mask throughout all of these layers towards the blue in and out points. And this one for the masking, we're gonna have to do it for all the masks and now we still have an issue because this last one, our Rec. 9 conversion is left alone over here and as you can see it still doesn't look quite right. And now we don't have a blue out point because these are combined to the layer mixer and we can't combine all three of these into this one. So the only thing we're gonna do to fix that is just apply another serial node up here, apply that to this one and we can just copy our mask from up here and apply it there. Very simple, very easy. Just make sure that these are connected correctly and they are and there we go now if we zoom in we can actually just do that in the timeline let's just play it through 
And now you can see that lock down here. Up here it's Rec 709 with our contrast and exposure. And here we also have the masking and the color grading. You can see how the colors are changing when they leave the top part and come down here. Now it's darker and moody on this one and the greens definitely are changed. So that was method one. As said, that works best if all the clips are shot on the same camera and you can do the same grading on all of them. But in reality, how often does that happen? At least for me, it doesn't happen very often. I usually do drone clips and mix and match and it's clips from all over the place. So the same grade won't really work. So let's go to a second option and a second way of doing this. And as you can see here, we have the same clip. Let's just mute this track again. This is the exact same as we just saw. The difference here is that we have these all of these set as compound clips. And the reason for that is that the clips are moving. So that means that our mask will be moving as well when we start doing it individually on the clips instead of on adjustment layers. So that is why we have made all these compound clips. So let me just show you how it looks without. So let's just decompose all of these. Okay, and I'll go back into our color grading tab show our clips and now we can see we're actually back to having sort of what we had before everything looks pretty fine we have all the color grades and everything in place the only thing is that if i wanted to do because we've split the clips to make them scroll as you can see here we'll have to do it over and over again and also if i apply a mask let's say we take this clip i'll go in here and i'll just make a serial node for this one, pull it up and then make a mask, put it in here and just, it doesn't really, I'm, we're not going to use this mask, so I'm not going to do it perfectly. Zoom out a little bit and when I click play, let's see what happens. The mask is moving, which is not what we want. You can go in and keyframe this one. So you could go in and say, okay, we are at the start of the clip. We want it to be on the top. Let's click frame, keyframe. Now we put a little keyframe up here. Then we go to the last frame. We pull it up. We make sure it's aligned. And then another keyframe is added. And that is a way that you can make it stick. But honestly, that is quite an annoying way to do it. So that's not what I would recommend. So let's just go back to our clip, delete this one again. And the first thing I want to do is because we still have all the same grades, I can just steal one of these clips and pull them out here to make it easy to apply the grade to the other clips. If you have different clips with different grades on them, you can just pull out each clip and you'll see in a second why we're doing that. So now you've seen why we want to make all of these into a compound clip each, because then we'll just have one clip and it'll put the rotation into the clip so that nothing is moving, kind of like an adjustment layer when we're pulling that on. So let's just make compound clips of all of these. I don't care about the naming. It's probably giving it a high number. It is because I've already done this once. So let's just make a compound clip for each. And even though this is one big line, it's still rotating that we still have keyframing on our Y axis. So the power windows will still go down or scroll with the clip. So we're actually gonna make this one a compound clip as well, even though we didn't do any cutting on this one. And now you can see the clips look kind of weird. That's because they are scrolling in from different points in the clip. And that's completely normal. It just looks a little bit weird. But if we go into our color grading tab now, you'll see that we don't have any color grading left. And that's also why you want to turn off the color grade before you make the compound clips, because otherwise those will be made a part of the compound clip. Okay, stick with me. So that's why we went in and copied this clip out here. So now we can just Select all of these and apply our grade to these. Again, if you have different grades for each clip, you'll just have one of each out here if you made a copy, and then you can just copy the grade individually to each clip. So let's go into the timeline, just delete this clip. We don't need it anymore. And now we have our grades on all these clips. Okay, so we want the bottom one to be lock. We want this one up here to be Rec 709 and our adjustments up here, our contrast and exposure. And we want the middle one to be our color grading and our masking. Okay, so exactly the same as before. And the main difference here is that, let's just zoom in a little bit, 
is that now we're doing it individually in this clip. So essentially the first part is the same. Let's just make a serial node, put it up here, and we're gonna make a mask. Gonna make, but this time it's slightly different because now we're gonna make a mask for the bottom or the top half, like so. Let's just zoom in and make sure that we're hitting that black line and we are now Remove all of these softenings because we need those in a second. And now we have our clip here. So let's just turn on the parts of the image that we want right now. Make sure that the blue lines go through everything here. Like so. I think we need to continue it all the way through all of them like so, perfect. And we have to do the same thing with this one as we did before. So let's just copy our mask from up here, pull it in there and mask everything out. And now the reason why it doesn't look right is because our it's actually our bottom layer that we're working on. So take our clips. So we won't see anything happening, which is quite confusing. But if we go in further into our timeline, you'll see now that the clip on the top is actually doing what we want it to. So let's just zoom in a little bit here. Okay, now we have everything selected for our clip up here. And it looks great. So let's just make sure that these are deselected again for a second and check that everything works as it's supposed to. And it is. Now it is only our contrast and our Rec 709 conversion that is there. And that goes through the first part and the second part, and then it removes it in the bottom. So now we want to do the same thing with our masks and our color grade. So let's just add a serial node before this one. Make sure that it is attached correctly, like so, between the blue points, the keying, and go in and select a new mask. Zoom in a little bit add the mask to our middle here, like so. Remove all the softening, like so. And now what we should see is that magically our mask is only affecting this part. And because our Rec 9 conversion is still the top and the middle clip, we should be all good. So let's just check if that works. First part, nothing will happen. Now the clip comes in, it doesn't have the masking and the grading. You see the grading and the masking coming in and then being removed again. So as you can see, this is another way of doing it. Because we now have the exact same settings on all the clips, I can just go in and copy this to all of them just to show you that it's working like so. The only reason I can do that is obviously because the same grade goes for all the clips. If you had individual clips with individual grading, you will have to go through the steps for all of the clips. That's just the way to do it. So that's why the adjustment layer part is a little bit easier because if you have the same clips, you can just apply it to the two adjustment clips and that's all good. If you have different clips with different grades, you have to add the mask. But honestly, it's two or three masks depending on, I have a DaVinci Gamut workflow going on here with our uh, Rec 709 conversion. That's why I have two CSTs here. I can just show you I have from my Canon settings to DaVinci White Gamut, and then I have the same thing down here from DaVinci Gamut to Rec 709 and Gamma 2.4. So don't have to care that much about that, but essentially I think you will have to do the same either way because you need the first mask here for your color correction settings, and then you need a second mask here for all of your color grading and your masking, if you want to do it the same way that I have done it here. And then you need a second mask after your masking here to make sure that the Rec 709 conversion goes through. You want that on the middle and the top clip, because otherwise, if you only apply it to the middle clip, then it won't really work as you want it. You can just show you here how that looks. Now the contrast and exposure has been added up here, but the Rec 709 conversion is not, so that's why it looks weird. So we need the mask from up there. And essentially you just copy that mask. So you basically only have to do it twice, right? 
you have to mask out the top part and the middle part. So guys, I hope that wasn't too technical. I hope it didn't go too fast. I tried to make this one yesterday and it didn't go very well because I wasn't prepared enough. So I had to kind of prepare everything beforehand and go through it like this to not make it an hour long tutorial. So I hope you stuck with me. If you have any questions, please feel free to add them down in the comment section. Make sure to subscribe, please at least do like the video. It really makes a difference. It helps me out. It helps YouTube push my videos and I'm doing a lot of them at the moment. So if you liked it, please hit the like button. I'm super happy and stoked that you want to tag along for these videos. I really hope that you have made something out of this. And if you do, if you make a color grading video like this that scrolls through different parts of the color grade, please tag me on Instagram or on TikTok if you make them there. I would love to see them. I would love to repost some sometimes as well. So please, I love to see your work. I love to see that you use my tutorials and the value that I try to provide for you. So don't hesitate to do that. Don't hesitate to reach out to me on Instagram as well. I try to reply to everyone, but actually the comment section here is an a lot easier way to get feedback from me because it isn't as populated yet as my Instagram DMs are. <laughs> but Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for following this small series. If you haven't watched the two other parts, they are linked down in the description. Make sure to watch those as well. And until the next time, probably tomorrow, if you want to tag along again, I'll see you there. And otherwise, just take care and have fun.